Hi everyone! So this is going to be a super casual, unscripted video. Over the last five years of Abacaba being a data visualization channel, I've gotten dozens of questions from other people who want to create similar videos, how I do it. So I figure I should just make a tutorial walking you through my entire process of making it so that if any of you viewers out there want to create a new data, visualiza uh, data visualization channel, you can do it. So as a heads up, I use Processing 3.1 to create almost all of the bar graph slash line graph videos, which is just kind of like a wrapper for Java. And the reason I like using it is because it's one of the easiest ways to hit the ground running and draw something graphically. You don't need to import any libraries, you don't need to download anything, it just works. Correction, processing is not a wrapper by any means. Instead, it's a flexible software sketchbook and a language for learning how to code within the context of the visual arts. This tutorial will be split across multiple videos, and I'll put all those videos together in one playlist. I'll put links to everything in the description. Also, the way I program these Abacaba videos is probably not the most efficient way to do it. I'm sure there are tons of JavaScript libraries, like D3, that can do things way more efficiently. But people in the comments were asking me how I make these videos, so that's what I'm going to show you, even if it's not the fastest way. So if you don't have it already, just go to processing.org and click download. I'm using the most recent version 3.1, I think, but even if you use an older version, this should all still work. The reason why I use processing and code it manually, instead of those built-in data visualization libraries like D3, or Flourish, which I know a lot of people like using, is because when I code it myself, I have much more control over everything that happens on the screen. For example, in one of my more recent Abacaba videos, which is Ranking Channel Ranks Other Ranking Channels, I have this little icon that shows up every time a channel hits a power of 10 subscribers. So if they hit 100,000 subscribers, they get a silver play button. If they hit a million, they get a gold play button. And so you can see these icons kind of fading into view every time someone hits that milestone. And I don't know if that's possible with D3 or Flourish, but when I code it myself, I can do it absolutely whatever I want. So that's one reason. As another example, this video shows the history of the competitors who can solve the most Rubik's Cubes blindfolded in competition. They get penalized, points taken away, for every cube they solve wrong, and I depict that penalty by having the competitor's bar being folded over and the dark backside of the bar backtracking on their progress. I don't think something like this would be possible with D3 or Flourish because I need direct access to the code that draws the bar itself. So yeah, those are my examples for why I use processing. So enough of that, let's get started. I'm going to assume that if you want to create a video like this, you already have a data set in mind. So once you've collected that data set, it will look like this. What I have here is a mock data set. It's not real, it's completely made up, but it'll help demonstrate how I go from data set to final video. And in this case, I am graphing t uh, 15 people at the top. So their names are Ronnie, Sally, Timmy, Jenny, and so on. There's 15 people and I'm graphing their IQs over time. So every date here on the left, which you can see starts with January 1st, 2018, I have an IQ for that person. And I had this going for a little over two years, so that should give you a good sense of like how to make a long scale time-lapse data video. Now, I especially created this data set to help showcase a bunch of edge cases that might happen with a data set. So to show that, let me select it all and just use Google's automatic chart creating tool. So we get a line graph that shows all the data in one image, which is actually quite nice, but it's not animated, so that's not what we want. But just before we get started, you can already see what I'm trying to test with the software. For example, this orange line is someone whose IQ was rising and then took first place for maybe a day or two and then fell below. That's a special edge case that we're going to want to test out to see if it can deal with the rankings correctly when it changes that quickly. I also have this crazy spindle-like effect here where the person whose highest IQ varies a lot quickly over time. So we can see how well does the software show fast movement that's very unpredictable like that. Finally, I have these two lines rapidly increase in IQ and then rapidly decrease. In fact, 
The range of this data set right now looks like it's between 0 and 250, which I think makes sense for IQ. Also, someone's IQ went down to 0. Who was that? Bobby! Oh my god, Bobby. What a shame. Anyway, I have it set so that these IQs go all the way up to... 1 million. So we're really going to push the limits of the software to see if it can handle bar graphs going from the range of 0 to 100 or so, all the way up to a million, and see whether the scaling works correctly, see whether the tick marks on the horizontal axis work correctly, and yeah, we're just gonna keep going until it works. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this graph now because that's not what we want. I'm gonna copy this entire table and paste it into a CSV with Notepad++. So plop, paste it in, control S to save, and I'm gonna save it in this folder. So tutorial is my current folder for this whole project. Let me just make a folder inside of it called um, tutorial drawer. It doesn't really matter. And then I'll just call this data.csv or TSV because it's tab separated values. 